In this video, we're gonna take a Dell Precision 5680 laptop, and we're gonna add an additional four terabytes of SSD storage to it. This is my employer's laptop. I work remotely. They've given me permission to open up the case and to put in the storage that they have supplied. Um, my first issue that I ran into is even though I have lots of these little bits, the smallest one I have is a T7. And unfortunately, the Dell case takes a T5. So I ran off to the computer store to see what they had. And fortunately, they were closed at the time because then I went over to a big box store and I came across this kit. And this kit was $12 and it has all sorts of torque sizes from uh, T3, T4, T5, which is what I need for this laptop, 6, 7, and some others in there. And this was half the price of, or almost half the price of what I would have paid at the computer store for something of less choices. Anyway, so before we can take the back off, we have to take this laptop and put it into what is called service mode. Prior to going into service mode, we remove any peripheral devices, including any SD cards. We make sure there's no power coming into the unit. We open it up. And normally my system will just power up. After logging in and closing out all applications, we hold down the B button and the power button for three seconds. And this should put the computer into a service mode, which is kind of like disconnecting the battery since the battery is internal to the unit. Now we close up our laptop, turn it over, and get ready to remove the fasteners. This Dell has a total of eight fasteners, two on the back side, two center, two towards the front, and then two towards the center of the front. We're using our Torx number five. They should turn fairly easy. It shouldn't take a lot of torque, because if it does, then either the screw is gonna get stripped out or the bit. And now you wanna make sure that you put that in a safe place. So we're gonna get a little lid or container so that we don't lose these fasteners. With the eight fasteners in a safe place, we put that out of the way so we don't knock it over, and we're ready to remove the lid. We're gonna turn the machine around so that the SD card is facing us, and we're gonna get a guitar pick, a scribe, a plastic scribe of some sort, and right where the slot is, you're not gonna stick it in there. You're gonna come off to either side of it and then you're gonna to try to separate the bottom case from the body of the laptop. Again, don't, don't go inserting in here because you might do some damage. Just work from that edge either upwards or downwards so the idea is to separate this bottom shell because there's nothing holding it in place except uh, friction and maybe some tabs inside. So even though the Dell instructions call for using a tool like this and starting over by the SD card, at the front of the laptop on the bottom shell, there's this little indentation here, and I'm able to get my tool in here, and if I come along the edge, I'm able to start unsnapping where it's being held, 
and you sort of just want to work your way along the sides, come out, go down to the back, and what we're going to do to remove the lid is we're going to lift and push that way towards the back of the laptop once we break it free by using our tool and lifting up and you may hear an occasional snap as the tabs let go. And so just work your way around, be patient with this and don't stick this too far in there because you don't want to damage any internal components. So it looks like we have the case unsnapped and I'll show you that right there. There's a little piece of black plastic and that is probably one of the tabs. But don't worry, the case is being held together by fasteners. So if you break one or two tabs, that's okay. So now the idea is we're gonna lift this bottom shell and we're gonna push towards the back of the computer. And again, we don't wanna force anything, but you heard just another snap and the case comes off this way. Again, this is the hinge side of the computer and that's the front. Basic components, battery, speaker, speaker, SSD one, SSD two, fan, fan, cooling coil, taking the heat from the CPU and the graphics card and delivering it to the fans. And then you have your peripherals on the side. One more precaution that Dell prescribes is here's the battery pack and here's the connector from the battery pack to the motherboard. And there are two screws and we're supposed to loosen those two screws with the two fasteners loosened, the plate should be able to be removed out of the way. Then you'll see another plate and it has a tab on it. You pull on that tab or lift up and that should disengage the battery from the motherboard. Don't forget to reattach all this before putting the cover back on. Here is our four terabyte storage that we're about to add. Here's a plate that goes over and that's gonna dissipate heat. There's a fastener at one end of it. And we're gonna take that out. Don't let that drop inside the motherboard. And you should be able to lift and pull forward and separate, set that aside. The terminal is on this end. So we take our storage and it's keyed at the bottom here. And so we're gonna take that keyed portion, find it on the port here, and then just slide it in. And once it's slid in, it's just gonna prop up. A quick tip, most of these heat sinks if they haven't been used before, so there's no SSD card there, there'll be an adhesive label that needs to come off and it says remove. So make sure you take that off. And what that does for you is it actually exposes the heat sink material. Then we're gonna lower it down, reinsert our heat sink over the top of it lay that down, line it up, so that we can now put our fastener back in place. And the tricky part is not to drop the fastener. And then you tighten it down, 
Oh, there's another piece of plastic there. Probably broke off from somewhere else. Okay, so now we're done with that installation. But we can't forget to come back here where we separated power from the battery. And we're gonna push that clip forward. You'll be able to tighten down the fasteners. You're not gonna tighten this so hard that you'll strip anything. It just needs to be snug. Okay, and with that in place, we're gonna take our lid and the back side where the hinge goes, that's this end here. And we're just gonna come forward, let that catch left and right, or yeah, right and left. And then you should be able to just snap, 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 snap in place. And now we're gonna to go to our little container and reattach all eight fasteners. Thing to note, most of these go in at an angle. So what I do is I place them and then I turn counterclockwise so that they have a chance to drop into where they're threaded. Then I go forward. With the case sealed up, we make our power connection, any other peripherals that you want to connect to your laptop. We open up the case and it should power up on its own. And that takes it out of service mode because you have power coming into it. As your system boots up, if you hit F2, it'll go into the BIOS mode. There, it'll probably end up in overview and you wanna come down to storage. And then if you go down, Let's see if this works. There we go. Drive information. Here's our one terabyte. And then the one we installed is four terabytes. The BIOS is recognizing that additional storage. And now we can exit out of BIOS and reboot. Once Windows launches, you'll want to hit the start button and type in disk management. And once that launches, you should get this, that it wants to initialize the disk and it'll list it probably as disk one. Disk zero is the operating system. And then you have a choice of master boot record or GUID. We want to go with GUID, the default. And now it's been initialized, but it has not been formatted because you see it says it's unallocated. So we right click, we want a simple volume, we tell it next, we're not gonna divide this up into partitions, tell it next. Uh, it's gonna assign it D as a drive letter, that's fine. NTFS is the systems file format and that's perfect. We just go with all the defaults, make sure it's in perform a quick format, otherwise it'll take a very long time. And then we hit finish, and voila, we are done. And now if I go into Explorer, I will see that there is an operating system, C drive, and my new volume D drive and there's my four terabytes. If you found this video interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.